Well, welcome back to Pokemon Run and Bun. I don't know if this is actually going to be a real video that ever goes up on the channel, because if this run scrubs out, I will delete this shit. Uh, this is attempt two. We're going to switch starters. We're going Piplup this time. Let's do it. Quiet nature plus special attack minus speed. That might be really good nature. Yeah, no, Polion's slow as shit, and he is a special attacker. Uh, this seems cracked. No, this actually seems like it's it's the it's the guy. Let's check the IVs. Okay. I mean, HP special attack IVs seem really good. From Little Root Town, we get the Secti, the Surskit. Getting another Surskit on attempt two makes me very happy. Makes me feel like I didn't completely throw away attempt one. Sassy is uh, minus speed, which seems kind of mediocre. And the IVs are also kind of mediocre, especially mediocre if we want this thing to be reasonably fast and defensively bulky. Uh, we got good HP, but that is fucking it. Um, Growlithe we picked up. This is in the next town, which I forget the name of, where all the fire types are. That town. Plus attack, minus defense. Growlithe. Uh, with great IVs. Decent attack and defense and special defense. So, I mean, he doesn't have HP, he doesn't have speed, but he's got defensive bulk. He's got his attack stat pretty high, leaning into the nature. Seems pretty good. I'm happy with this overall. We got a Rookadi that was on the route to the west of the second town. Uh, this guy is dog shit. Um, average defenses at best, and other IVs are pretty bad. Uh, we got a Starly, which seems really good. A fucking adamant Starly. Uh, with 24 attack IV uh, average on defenses, but max HP. Speed's a bit mediocre, but maybe that's a scale target. Uh, this seems pretty damn good overall, to, in my opinion, which is based on almost no me metrics. Um, we got a Budu, which came from the area with all the grass encounters. This is Rash, which is a special attack increasing nature, but it reduces special defense, which I believe is the defensive stat on the, the Roselia line. Um, IVs are really, really good, though. 31 defense, 31 HP, 29 special defense, all around great. Uh, IVs for defensive bulk, but mediocre special attack and speed. Again, one or two scales maybe makes this thing amazing. Um, uh, defensive bulk, bad IVs, more, more or less. Compound eyes, bold nature. That seems pretty good, actually, if it's plus... Okay, this guy seems pretty good. I have a plan. It's not the best. We don't have, like, a clear way to beat this Carvana. So I'm leading... Did I get my lead correct, or did I not? I didn't sweat it. I did switch the order of my party! Okay, maybe this is a, this this can still work. Uh, just don't flinch me. Oh, oh, fuck! Fuck! Fuck the original plan! Fuck it! Fuck the plan! So the original plan was Growlithe, get the Intimidate, immediately switch to a water type on a water pulse, and then try to, like, swing through bite flinches to kill. That was a high roll. So to be clear, Ferris here um, was never dead to bite. It can just barely tank the crit. 52%, 53% on the max, so a crit is like 75. Was this a crit? Wait, did this crit me? It must have, right? For me to be at 14? Oh, I'm, I'm Cherry Berry. No, so this was a straight 20 damage. Wait, what was the damage roll? Hold on. Wait, how did this get a 20? Oh, fuck, I have minus one in the calc. Whoopsies. We were dead to crit. I had this intimidated in the calc. Ho, 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 fuck, dude. Oops. I mean, it worked. I would have switched if I saw that. So the fact that I missed that I had this intimidated in the calc... Um... Saved it? <laughs> because it caused me to just swing. Krogun comes in. So this should be dead to bird. So given what we have up right now, uh, I might be able to play this differently. If we go to Growlithe and Intimidate this, that just makes it a little safer. So I see no reason not to do that. We'll take 20% um, or something here from uh, Fake Out, but like, I think it's still worth it. Just get the Intimidate up. So, Krogunk, minus one now. Let's do what we can on Shellos here. 
Because Shellos is definitely not doing anything on the exit queue. Yeah, let's uh, let's try and save the guys. Uh, that kind of sucks. Uh, let's get some chip damage in here. Rock Smash is... Uh, okay, Poison Touched. I kind of missed that that was a thing. Right now, Growlithe is still useful against Exit Q. We should keep him that way. Do we go to Allen? Oh, wait. Do, wait, Aguja doesn't do nothing. Wait, we can eat his berry. Wait, 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 wait. That's huge. How does Belch work? He clicks Rock Smash, 38 to 32. We click Pluck and eat his berry. We shouldn't do enough damage here to like trigger it prematurely, I don't think. Stolen ate the berry. Now we're fast. Wait, is this like insane? We outspeed. We just killed Pluck now, right? Sick. Wait, this is a way better strat. Other than the fact that we risked immediately dying to crit, um, this ended up being a little smoother. That's less risks on the Krogonk. I don't think there was risks, but it was really like narrow. Um, and I didn't factor in Poison Touch, which could have fucked us. So now the exit queue. Now the original plan for this was Ferris. So this actually might be a worse line because of the situation we're in. So, you're plus speed, you currently outspeed the eggs. The eggs kill your ass dead with Bullet Seed. Bullet Seed does like no damage to um, Budu. If we come out of this with enough health on Budu, we're okay. Alright. One, two, three, crit. Okay. 31 HP. Confusion max roll here is 30. On the crit. On the crit, it's 30. We're never dead. Sludge does 70%. Oh, we're faster. That's actually insane. Nice crit. Um, Oran Berries confusions us to 7? 31 to 7? Wait. Okay, the so pivot to you on confusion. And then Growlithe on Bullet Seed. Yeah, okay, that's always the play. Confusion, Bullet Seed to Growlithe. Intimidate, Oko Stun Spore there. That's fine. Um, go for the hit. Just connect and, and kill his ass. Close. Go for another one. Confusion to 16, 26. Yes. Okay. Uh, we got our Duford Town encounters. Duford Town and the two nearby rats were fishing. I already spoiled that this guy's adamant to myself. Fucking Adam and Tyrog is our encounter. Uh, obviously, adamant on a fighting type seems great, but this also influences his, his evolution, I think. So, Tyrog. If attack is greater def than defense, it's Hitmonlee. So, this is like a Hitmonlee. Like, guaranteed hit, Mamli. Probably, 1918. Well, that's not great, but again, maybe scales can prop this up more. Um, maybe it's good enough. Maybe this does the job we need it to wherever it needs to do a job. Which, I don't know where that is. He is a fake-out guy already, too, so that's something that's useful. Horsey joined us again. Horse Horseshoe the Horsey. We'll swim gentle nature minus defense plus special defense. Uh, okay. That's actually bad. Our other one was sniper, so that one's Swiss swim. Shell armor turtle. Okay, okay. Rash plus special attack minus bedef, but look at those IVs. Woo! Okay, relax, swift swim. That seems. Okay, no, yes. I think we had Swiss from last time, actually. Relax is great, actually. Wait. Holy shitting fuck. I mean, his HP sucks, but... 21 defense with plus nature, 25 speed death, 31 attack. This is fantastic. This dude's great. 31 attack and this is huge. Wait, this is so fucking good. The time has come for the next boss fight. This one is a little... 
who knows how well this goes, right? Because shit compounds. You have to fight them back to back. So, like, we'll see how it works out. Here, click Smackdown. We take a Nightshade. Yep. And then we kill this with Aqua Jet. Boom. Murkrow down. Nice and easy. Okay. So, Skrelp does come in. So, I was right about that. This was, this was what I expected from planning with Skrelp second, based on swapping shit. So, max damage to Turtle here is 40% Water Pulse. There's always a switch. Yeah, Turtle having some health going into round two against Marini is probably relevant. Let's check that real quick. So, when we fight the Marini, yeah, only 17% from Venoshock. So, we always go for like a Mud Slap on the Marini or something. Okay, cool. Yeah, that checks. So, Roselia does, like, incredibly heavy lifting on this fight. Um, if we switch in a Toxic or Protect, this is completely free. Um, Water Pulse Confusion's, like, the bad line. Let's just do it. It goes Water Pulse. We don't get confused. Okay. So, uh, we have Hidden Power Grass. This is 90 base power grass move. Does not kill them. It does only 40 to 50% because this is a poison water type. I think we always click it first, though. If we crit, uh, there's really good upside. So we do that. Yeah, it does less than half. That's what we basically expect. He gets his recovery. I think I want to absorb here. And then hidden power. For more recovery. So absorb heals 16%, acid is 20%. So this almost takes the entire acid back. And that's max roll acid. Like if we get a high roll absorb into a low roll acid, we actually gain HP. Let's absorb once. That's pretty good. Special defense drop seems really bad. Uh, let's hit power to get the kill for sure. Protects, that's fine. Now we definitely need to hit power, make sure he dies. Okay, lastly, Tortuga. Does the special defense drop here matter? We still have speed after plus one. No, we just absorb. Absorb into Rindo Berry. Still does insane damage. Fully heals us. We take the Ancient Power. We just click it again to get as much HP back going into round two. That's great. Okay, good outcome. The special defense drop could have been it could have been better to not have that, but this is okay. Marini comes in. So if we make contact with this, um, it'll. If we make contact into baneful bunkers, we become poisoned. Yeah, I think this is always just mud slap. The click soak. Why does it soak? Mud slap again? Clicks toxic? Okay. I guess it clicks soak. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe soak is just like prioritize or something weird. Maybe it does it because it gets sort of a rock typing and it does more damage. So this is definitely a Venom Shock. Okay, Venom Shock comes in. 39. You couldn't miss that one, buddy? You can you can throw me that bone? We're never dead to crit. So this is just mud shot. We need one mud shot to connect and drop speed. Clicks toxic. We have Pecha. That's huge. That's actually like really good. Because now we can mud shot again. It clicks toxic again. And now we just keep mud shotting, right? We're faster. At Baneful Bunkers, we don't care. Then it dies. Yeah. Frillish comes in. This is a high base power hex. It, hopefully it's it is hex because if it's not i get got mega rused okay great so this guarantees shockwave always and then that gets us into roselia and we just start healing we go absorb and then hp grass with a kill shockwave 31 to 27 always absorb first to get out of potential hex damage ranges on like crits or whatever okay it gets disabled 24 to 34 Hidden power kills, always. Any downside? I don't think so. Uh, does absorb kill always? Absorb kills always. Probably always absorb. 
Oh, it's a disabled. Right, we saw the disabled. Cursed body, procced. Okay, final mon, Whirlipede. This should be Pin Missile. Okay, let's put the minus one in the calc. Quick's a rollout there. Actually goes for the rollout. I think we always need to reset this. Quick's rollout, we take five. Fake out. Flinches, speed boost, Rocky Helmet damage. Okay, are we dead? If it rollouts, we just gotta probably go for the kill. It does click rollout again. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no, no, we need to go to Kara while this is locked in. Yeah, this is, go here, risk Kara. 25, speed boost, we take damage. We click Smackdown. Cause if, if we let this get out of being locked into rollout, then it Venom shocks. That's probably death. Smackdown does can do over half here. Quick's roll out. 17, 27. I'm, I'm okay with sacking this, I think. Rollouts to... Okay, well, yeah, we're definitely dead to roll out there. Yeah, so I should have counted turns. I should have counted roll out turns. All right, yeah, fuck it. We got to sack Shellos. That's just, that's just what this is, right? Oh fuck, he was faster. I just blanked out speed boost. I just blanked it out. I think that was a reset rollout though, right? It was triple intimidated. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Did I did I almost throw? Okay, if that so that was minus three. If that was rollout number five. Yeah, that was like death. Wait, I think I just massively failed to like my spot check and then came out okay. Jiu thing, the electric static jolly. Plus speed, minus special attack. He's a physical attacker, so this is pretty good. Uh, average special attack, very high bulk, low speed. One scale maybe makes him amazing. He gets Thunderfang, seems pretty cool. Uh, and then we never got a Slateport encounter, so I fished us up a Remoraid. Hustle, always, I think. Gentle, does is, is it do anything? I don't know. 29 special attack, 24 special defense. Might do something. I mean, that's really high special attack. This is maybe like a Roxanne sack, I think. I think I've heard that bandied about up for Octillery. Static makes it so it's 50% chance to be an electric encounter from the table if there is an electric encounter, which is only Togedomaru. And then the other half of the 50% encounter rate becomes the normal encounter table for the additional like 10% Togi. Fucking yeah. So yeah, Iron Barb's hasty minus defense. Uh, good IVs, I guess. Like, mid-defense HP, high attack. Nah, it's kind of bad. It's not awful. It's not, like, unusable or anything. It's okay. It could be worse. Okay, this is the team for Brawly. Um, we went ahead and candied uh, first get into a Mask Rain. The Intimidate pivot with Togedomaru, it's too fucking good. Um, and the double Intimidate's too fucking good. And Alan takes just too much damage from a lot of stuff here because there's a lot of, um, you know, fighting moves that still do risky damage. And we definitely don't want fighting moves coming to Judith. So the, the combo here specifically makes sure that, like, Togedomaru never eats a fighting move. Huge. Speaking of Togedomaru, we went ahead and scaled its speed to 31 using our first heart skill ever. This allows it to outspeed low punny. It does 50% damage with fake out into spark. Um, so we just got to get low punny chip to 50% and we have a free kill. This also does um, a free kill on Poliwhirl if we can get it in safely. Don't know how well that's going to work out. Here, here is a similar pivot for low punny, but does a lot more damage with Aqua Jet to try and get it in range for the nice, cheap, easy kill on Togi without Togi taking too much damage. Here is also 50% damage priority move into Combo Skin. So that gives us some utility there. 
Quinkle just straight up beats Scraggy free. Alan's kind of the flex slot. Theoretically, Togedemaru takes two kills here. Everybody else kind of takes one. Uh, and Hitmontop is kind of the one where... Hitmontop and Combaskin are going to require a little bit of teamwork to get them into range to kill them properly. Um, and I, I honestly don't know 100% how those fights play out. Theoretically, we only really need five of these Pokemon. I think there's a universe... Maybe I'm being overly optimistic, where Togedemaru really does get two kills and everybody else takes one, and like Mask Rain picks up a kill. I don't know. I don't know. This is this is what I got. I'm so fucking nervous. I. There's still Mons in the box that I feel like could be here, like R Roselia is decent here, but I think this has to be this has to be the, the squad. I really hope I've done this right. Oh god, I'm so nervous. I, I feel like I've been gifted a really good box. Maybe not for this gym specifically, but in general. It's not bad for this gym by any means, I don't think. And I just, I don't want to, I'm so nervous that like, I got a, a, like a god level run. And I'm going to throw it away because it's my second attempt ever. But then everybody will make fun of me. <laughs> okay, we're going to play this real slow. Real slow. Cub food. Print plot. Brick Break does just under 50% damage to us. Block does just under 50%. Bubble Beam does just over 50%. Aqua Jet is 20%. This should always be Brick Break. So we, we he goes first, he Brick Breaks, then we pluck and eat his berry. Perfect. Please don't crit. Great. Low damage roll, I think, too. We eat the eye of Papa. Okay. Uh, there's no reason to pluck. This is always Bubble Beam. If we speed drop it, I don't think it matters. No, it has to be speed dropped twice for us to outspeed. Uh, yeah, we're at full. I mean, this is just Bubble Beam. We got this. It doesn't matter what happens here, right? Like, the only thing that fucks us is if he goes Zen Headbutt for some reason and flinches. Alright. That was it. This took me so long to catch this on the Cub Fu, too. I was, for the longest time, I was looking at um, Pluck on uh, Corvusquire. But Corvusquire baited um, fucking Zen Headbutt. So it loses to flinches. It takes like 30% instead of like the 45% print plup takes here. But 45% plus guaranteed Aya Papa Berry in a three shot with a priority move versus always being at the mercy of flinch from Zen Headbutt and maybe never eating the Aya Papa Berry and being completely fucked when we have to swap. Like print plup actually saved it here. So huge. Okay, so this is the low punny. So presumably this is always retaliate do we just click aqua jet wait we just click aqua jet right because it always yeah no it's just it always it always escape it, it always uh u-turns escape cards whatever the fuck eject button that's it and this is the only thing that would do more damage is if we went to turtle but keeping turtle healthy later makes sense this is combo skin wait this is probably great 62 percent thunder punch damage maybe not 40 percent or 40 is the max roll. No, we're mostly dead to Thunder Punch. Okay. I mean, there's no other play, right? It's just always Judith. Okay, Judith comes in. We eat the Thunder Punch. Iron Barb's damage. Speed Boost damage. Fake out. Okay. Flinches. Speed Boost some more. Now is faster than us. Masquerade on the double kick. For minimal damage. Set up Intimidate. Get the Intimidate up, it goes double kick, does two damage per double kick. Huge. That's essentially nothing. Lovely. It gets even faster, we don't give a shit. But now this is 62% Incinerate, 50% Thunder Punch. So this is almost always Incinerate, but can be Thunder Punch. We switch to Print Plop on what is probably an Incinerate, but maybe a Thunder Punch that doesn't kill. Uh, crit probably always kills, right? 
But then this guarantees Thunder Punch into Togedemaru. Togedemaru gets a fake out. Guarantees a double kick if we go to Turtle and we kill it. It's the line, right? We're risking crit on Printflop, but I don't see a better target. Wait, what are the damage ranges that we double Intimidate onto Staravia? No, then we're always baiting Incinerate, and that's what we don't want to do. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd only want one Intimidate here, so that we're still getting a Thunder Punch onto Togedemaru. Alright, good luck, Printplup. You're, the odds are in your favor immensely to not die here. Okay, it's Incinerate. Beautiful. We lose the Oran Berry. How much is Printplup's damage? This is 40 to 50 Aqua Jet. But now we're very dead to Thunder Punch. So this should always be another Thunder Punch into Judith. Yep, Thunder Punch. 51 to 44. Iron Barb's chip. Speed boosts. We click Fake Out. He's below half. Then this is Turtle. This is always safe. He never dies to crit. It's even incinerate. We lose the Oran Berry, but we take no goddamn damage. That's so fucking good, dude. Yes! This wants the superpower for 66.6%. Probably. Unless there's some... No, this is always HP Grass. Sorry, I can read. Wait, this is it. Right? This is always HP Grass. This is entirely free into Toga tomorrow. And we got it. Holy shit. Wait, this is so fucking perfect. HP Grass. Hidden Power Grass does no damage. Fake out? Okay. Let me verify. Let, let me make sure that I believe the damage range is in the calc. 20%. 94% spark. Do we think that was 20%? Looks a little shy to me. Believe. Believe the calc is right. We have like a really high safety margin on this. Yeah. I was going to say, there's like no way it's that wrong, right? Okay, hit on top. There's never any reason not to go masquerade on the mock bunch. There's the mock bunch. So now this is rock slide. This is minus one. Rock slide can still kill masquerade. Wait, so this is Toga tomorrow now, right? On rock slide. Guaranteed rock slide. Toga tomorrow takes 17 to 22. That's not even with the intimidate. And then we click fake out. That's how, that's how we chip this. There's the rock slide, 39 to 30, Oran Berry to 40. Quick fake out. How many PP is left on this? We don't need it after this. One, one PP left. This should be Mock Bunch now, back to Masquerade always. Mock Punch on Masquerade does nothing. Okay, so Togedemaru... We want to get the kill with Fake Out Spark Togedemaru. So if we come in now and Fake Out, we don't get that. Aerial Ace is 51 to 67. And we outspeed. No, Staravia should do this. 57%. Okay, I got it. Yep, Judith. Judith on rock slide 33 hp last fake out back to Bisecti on a mock punch intimidates again rock slide into pierre pierre clicks aqua jet we take a mock punch doesn't crit sub half we go to alan we get fourth intimidate up he clicks mock punch we click aerial ace he clicks mock punch Baby! Two Pokemon left. Low Pony comes in. Uh, does Masquerade do damage to this? Because Mas we don't need Masquerade after this fight. I mean, after this Pokemon. Like, I'm not saying sack it. Oh yeah, HP fighting on Masquerade does a huge amount of damage. Okay. Uh, Retaliate is 12% to Caracosta. 20%. This is, Car this is Turt. And then we're not risking Judith, that we can bring Judith in to secure the kill. Yeah. 
Pierre? Pierre on the retaliate potential. Boom. But now whatever this is, we just go to Bisecti. We get the Intimidate. It drain punches. It recovers nothing. Hidden power fighting. Takes a re We just retaliate. Do we just kill this on this? Wait, we just kill this on this. Yeah, no flinches, so we win. And if we do flinch, we just go to the other guy. This is... Uh, Rock Tomb? Oh, wait, 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 wait. We might not be able to switch in on a Rock Tomb. Yeah, we can't We can't take a Rock Tomb on Hitmonlee. Not because of the damage, because of speed drop. So this is Judith into Hwinkle, and hopefully it works. Rock Tomb takes the damage. Speed Falls does not make contact. We have no Fake Outs left. So this is probably Power Up Punch. We switch in. Power-up punch, 36 from 54. It looked to me like that was afterwards. Scraggy. Pitmon Lee. Power-up punch damage rolls are 16 to 19. That's a, yeah, that's, that's, that's correct. Okay, so now that this is plus one. Yeah, I needed a way to bait Faint Attack on the swap, but I don't think it ever actually would work because of Power Punch AI being like a thing. So we fake out, we double kick, we double kick. We take one more Power Up Punch, it's 51%. So we die to crit. Yeah, if we switch around, we're just taking more power-up punches. We have to go for it. 70% max roll here. We're dead to crit. We just have to we just have to risk it. Come on, baby, don't kill me. Don't kill me. I'm your friend. Don't kill me. I'm your friend. Don't kill me. We are friends. We win. Deathless. There's no that nothing bad can happen. Deathless Brawly on attempt two. Deathless Brawly on attempt two. Fuck yes, dude. We did a Deathless. I'm so hyped. I need to go to sleep. It says 1 a.m. I got work tomorrow. <laughs> it's okay, I can get like six hours. I'm not gonna sleep because I'm too fucking high. Fuck yes, dude. Team is the goat. So Alan didn't do that much. There might have been a better a better bring. I hate that it fully heals afterwards. I want to I wanted to see like the HP bars, but oh. the run continues, dude. How am I going to edit this down? This is two, and, two hours, 20 minutes of footage. How the fuck do I handle this? Oh well.